A new week means a new look at the Islanders' top five prospects in the system. So let's see who's in, and let's also talk about some goalies. So with another week of hockey in the books, let's look at how the top five prospects in the Islander system have evolved, if at all. So here's your new top five. Otto Koivula, Arnaud Zurando, Anatoly Golishev, Robin Salo, and Otto Ratu. First player on the list, Otto Koivula does not stop producing at the AHL level. He has now 10 points in 11 games for the Bridgeport Islanders. There's only three games this season where Otto, where Otto Koivula has not put up a point. He's been really, really good for the Bridgeport Islanders. And with that, his NHLE goes up. He's at 28.998, rounded up to 29 points. He's basically a 30-point player at the NHL based off of his production at the AHL level. And that's a really big step up for him. Last year was 20 points, but year before that, 14. And in 18-19, it was 21.2, really 21.3. Uh, so you can see that he's really taking that next step in terms of production. Now, does that mean he's going to jump to the NHL and be a 30-point player? Maybe based off the role he's been given, but if that's with the Islanders, I can't imagine that he's going to be a 30-point player. I, I, I really don't see it. They're going to expect cer certain things from him physically, and he has yet to develop that side of the game. It's a slow-going process. He's not going to develop that overnight, so it's may not, it may not be necessarily fair to him to cast so many stones in that regard. But at 6'4", you got to be more of a physical player, more of a power forward. He is not that yet. Second on the list, Arnaud Durando with 9 points in 11 games, 2 goals, 7 helpers for the Bridgeport Islanders. I talked about it in my weekend recap. The big key for Durando is consistency. He is giving consistent effort and it's being rewarded on the score sheet. And as such, his NHLE has gone up year over year. You can see 18-19 was his last year at the A at the QMJHL level, sorry, 9-point player. Then 19-20, kind of the same thing, stayed steady at 9.7, even took a little bit of a step back, really. And then 2021, 21-22, he started performing better. You can see 18 points at his NHLE, and now he's added 10 to that with 28.7. Can he be an NHL player? Yes. Like I said in the uh, weekend recap, the one thing that's going to get him to the NHL is this consistent work rate. That's what's going to get him there. Is he going to be a 30-point player at the NHL level? Mm, I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe better. I have a hard time seeing that one. I have a hard time seeing him in 28 points. But can he get there? Yeah, he probably can. So long as this work rate does not give up. Right, He's got to consistently work, consistently dig, and be consistent every night. And if not, mm, it's going to fall off quick because his skill level isn't going to hold him there on its own. Anatoly Golishev is three with six points in eight games. The number of games aren't there, but remember, he's a veteran. So, uh, and, and when I do that, I just because he's got so many games played at the KHL level, he counts towards the veteran rule uh, in the AHL. He's doing very well. Six points, eight games, five of those are goals. Uh, really good showing from Anatoly Golishev, who I would su suspect is going to get the next call up. The next time someone goes down, I have a hard time seeing Kiefer Bellows get that shot uh, over someone like Anatoly Golishev. Now, the problem with that is he is no longer waiver exempt. So if they have to send him back, he'd have to go through waivers. And I could fancy someone plucking him, but uh, you never know, really. Um, and if he goes back to the HL, like he might actually just say, you know what, I'm good. I want to go back to Russia. Arthur Staple has been warning us that for that over the last couple of weeks now. Uh, I haven't heard anything about him leaving necessarily or wanting to leave, uh, but I trust Staple on that regard. With a point this weekend, Robin Salo continues to amass the production at the AHL level. He's up to a 23-point pace, or I shouldn't say up to. He's at a 23-point pace because that's a little bit lower than what it used to be. And honestly, I don't think the production is crazy important necessarily. They want to see if he can play and skate and keep up with a North American schedule in a North American game. That's what they want to see. And so far, so good. The skating is fine. The playmaking is good. The quarterbacking on the power play is just as good. Uh, he's hitting all the check marks. 
doesn't mean they're going to call him up anytime soon. The only reason they call him up is if there's a significant injury on the, in the lineup, like someone's out for months at a time type of thing. Until then, he's going to stick there to work out the North American schedule at the North American pace. He might be there the entire year. Don't lose your heads over it. He will be at the NHL level, I imagine, next year if this continues. Coming in at number five is Aturatu. Out goes Simon Holmstrom. He's at six. Don't worry about it. In at number five, Aturatu, 22.6 NHLE. Roll it up to 23. That's all because of the last two games with Ukrit. I shouldn't say last. The first two games with Ukrit, where he puts up four points in two games. It also reflects at what level he's doing that. We're not talking about U20. We're not talking about the juniors in Canada. We're talking about Liga. And the Liga ranks pretty high when it comes to translation factors. The strength of that league is pretty good. It's not the strongest, but it's up there. Ratu is in a place where he can perform well and perform to his skill level. He's in the top six position. He's next to, I wouldn't say elite level players, but the team's top level scorers. He's with equal company when it, turn, when it comes to generating offense, and it's working. He's also getting power play time, and he's getting penalty kill time. Like, we want to see this. 22.6 is great for Aturatu. Depending on, on what model you look at, mine, I feel, is a little bit more conservative. There are some out there, as you can see here, that have him vaulted all the way to the top, putting up like 147 NHLE, which is absolutely ridiculous. But, but it does show that what he's doing here should not be ignored. Will it continue? We'll see. And if it does... Holy heck, look out because the Islanders have something on their hands if this continues. Now, I was asked recently about goalies and why I don't rank them. And it's just because I didn't have a way of getting one number that made sense compared to others, right? Like there's no real way to rank them compared to everyone else. And what I mean by that is skaters, right? I could probably rank goalies in and of themselves. But in terms of a strength of a prospect pool, having three guys kind of set aside and ranking them specifically only within themselves doesn't really give you a picture as far as where they sit within the Islanders prospect depth chart. So I've been toying with some things and what I'm working on right now is at a stage where I could talk about it, but it's not at a stage where I can roll them into things yet. And so I want to peel back the curtain a little bit to show you what I'm working on here. And what I've done is I've figured out an NHLE for goalies. And what I did is I took the save percentage, multiplied it by the translation factor for the league where that save percentage occurs to spit out a number that is essentially the same as skaters. Now you'll remember that the way the skaters number is derived is points production. So that's points divided per game times a translation factor times 82 to give you a, a sense of what it would look like at the NHL level. And so I've done the same thing here for goalies, but I'm not too sure about the numbers yet. And so you can see here over the last couple of years what they looked like for all three goalies in the system. You have Lennox, Skarik, and Tikkanen. 10 for Lennox, Skarik at 29, Tikkanen at 26. And so that would rank them, at least Skarik and Tikkanen, at the top or at least in the top five. And I'm not sure that they're there yet. Maybe Skarik, but I I'm not quite happy with these numbers. Because the thing with goalies is that they're always going to be or should be at 0.8 to like 0.920, right? Whereas most forwards are not. You can still have a good level of production for a forward at 0.5, right? 0.5 points per game. Goalies aren't, shouldn't be ranked the same way. So I still got to tweak this a little bit, but this is where I am with goalies right now. And you can already sense where things are in terms of the depth chart for goalies, at least. And that's why I wanted to bring this up. It's clear that Skarik is number one. Tikkanen isn't too far at number two. And then Lennox is quite far down at number three. But I feel that that is reflective less upon his abilities and more so upon where he's playing and what team he's playing for. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out in the comments below. Thank you for watching. Thank you for following. If you haven't subscribed yet, hit that button. And if you have, thank you, thank you, thank you.